Welcome to the Richard Sherman Podcast. Hit that sub button if you're new. We're here to give you great NFL content, game recaps, player interviews, and stories from around the league. Please tune in. Welcome back to the Richard Sherman Podcast. I have an incredible guest. Uh, the consensus number one pick for a lot of people. Uh, Travis Hunter. Obviously, everybody made all this hubbub about this bland comment that I've never even made. But I got to I got a chance to talk with him, got a chance to explain you know, what I meant, what I meant by that. I'm glad we got to clear that up. Big fan of your game, big fan of everything you've been able to do, the ability to play both ways full time, never get tired. Got a chance to go on your your podcast and talk about it. Yes, sir. Let's talk about everything right now. How you feeling right now? Good. I feel like a million dollars, man. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. I have working. Yeah, yeah. You out here working and you're working well. So we talked about that comment because I, I said blend and I said blend as in like there's a lot of receivers that that run fast and, and they're your size and they run routes. But there's very few people on earth that can do what you do on the defensive side and, and your instincts, your natural feel, your your technique. Um, we talked about how you played in that UCF game and the amount of opportunities you got. You got three targets and probably could have booked all three of them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just it's just impress, impressive. So I didn't mean oh you you're bland or whatever they said I said. I meant like you just would stand out more as a corner and I think that is your natural landing spot. And if somebody if you want to play 20 30 snaps on offense and, and give him 8 10 targets, do your thing. But to not let him play defense would be a waste. Yes sir. I get you, I get what you're saying. You know, we cleaned that up on my podcast and we also talked on the phone before we even came to the media. So yeah. we we on the same page, you know, the people, you know, they're going to try to get into our ear. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, you know, two black men going head to head ain't a good thing for us. So we decided we're going to head and dead that right now. So. Dead it immediately. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, sir. <laughs> Talk about your relationship with Prime and, and how mm -hmm. it's been, because like he said, there's just very few places that you could have won. You could have went anywhere in the country. You were, you're the number one guy. Yeah. But you came to coach prime because you he gave you the opportunity to play both sides of the football you learned from one of the best to ever do it talk about how it's been to be with him and then to follow him from jackson to colorado uh i, I start off saying he made my family feel comfortable which you know i'm a family person you know he made my family feel comfortable first before he even made me feel comfortable so him just making my family feel comfortable my mom was just like yeah I think this. I think this is the best idea for us. The best deal for us. You go learn from somebody that actually did it. Even though my mom don't watch football, but she know Coach Promise. So <laughs> it's kind. Of, it was kind of crazy. My stepdad knew who he was. You know, my brother. Me and my brother. You, we play football, so we obviously knew who he was. But then just how he kept his family around, like having Shador as quarterback, Shallow standing around, his oldest son, Bucky standing around, his, his daughters are standing around. It's just like his family oriented. And that's exactly what I wanted to be. And I wanted, I wanted to learn from somebody like that. You know, he played both sides of the ball. So, you know, exactly what it takes to be able to do that. And I know I want to be coached by one of the coaches that played in the league that done it before. And just me and him talking without no cameras, without anybody around, I, I got that idea that. I think this is the best idea for me, the best deal for me to go play for him, learn from somebody that did it, and him just giving me more advice outside of football, just life advice. Mm -hmm. it, it, it meant so much to me. I went in his office, I think, last week before we left the uh, UCF, and we we talked before practice for like two hours, just up there talking. And it, and it wasn't even about football. We just up there talking about life. So like me being able to just go walk in his door, and it no matter who in there, I'm going in there to talk to him. He knows exactly, like, he'll get them out of the room. We'll talk. He'll keep them in the room. We'll talk. It doesn't matter. I just feel more comfortable with being able to go up there and talk to him. He's like a father figure to me. You know, it, it means a lot because I told him, we got to go on the trip, man. This is going to be our last season. Right. <laughs> Whatever we got to do, we got to go ahead and do it, man. Go, go on the trip after the season. But he he meant so much to me. It's like a father, father figure to me. So I look up to him. Man, I mean, if there's not a better, very much a better human being on this earth than Dion and, and everything. You you can tell how much he cares and how passionate. He doesn't have to do this. He don't got to coach. But yeah. he, he pours so much into y'all. Talk about your journey because you're at Jackson State, you played well. You know, Shador played well. Shiloh played well. But Shiloh went to South Carolina yeah, first. But yeah. Talk about, like, did you ever feel like you just weren't getting the respect that y'all, you know what I mean, that y'all feel like y'all deserve? 
even before then? And then how was the transition going to Colorado? Like, how did you have a lot of paperwork? Was it ever it, touch and go at any point where it was like, maybe this won't work out? No, nah, I mean, I won't say we had any, like, pro- I had no problem with people, what people say about us for real. I mean, <laughs> if you go in, if I continue to be focused on that, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So I, I low key don't focus. I don't focus on what they talk about. I mean, unless somebody tell me about it, I'd be like, oh, all right, well, okay, I'm gonna keep supporting them, you know. Right. But now nah, that was never my focus. People not giving us our respect. I mean, I'm out here to play football. You you're gonna earn your respect. So me just being able to do what I'm doing right now, nobody probably respect me at Jackson State or last year, but now they respect me. So I didn't focus on them respecting me, but I made them respect me. So pretty much just that. And then, you know, I, I love the game too much, man. You just <laughs> We just focus on winning for real. Right, right. Well, when when when, when Prime came to you, said, "Hey, there's a chance we leaving. Mm-hmm. We we've been at Jackson. We having a good time, but it's a chance we might have to get up out of there. How did that make you feel?" Uh, it didn't make me feel no type of way. You know, I've spent five years in Georgia, only seeing Florida and Georgia as I was like growing up, unless I went on seven on seven trips and stuff like that. So like me coming to Colorado for the first time when I visit after our game. And I was like, I don't know if I want to be here. <laughs> I'm going to tell the truth. I didn't think I wanted to be here. So it, it took me a minute for me to decide if I wanted to come here or not. But I knew me and Coach Prime, we had that bun. It's just like, I'm not going to find it anywhere else. Right. And we just been growing that bun over that that one year that we spent at Jackson State and me going through them three surgeries and him just looking out for me and the coaching staff looking out for me while I was in that moment going through them three surgeries for like three months. Uh, it made me just have a flashback, like, nah, I can't leave him. I got to be with him. It, it is only right for me to stay here because I know I'm I'm learning. I'm getting right. better as a person, as a man, before I even did anything on the football field because I couldn't play for those three months. Right. So me understanding that and then just me talking to my fiance, you know, the first thing we did was probably we looked for a house. We went house searching, you know. I just let her do it. I let her pick out the houses, what she wanted to see, what she wanted, <laughs> what she wanted to look at. And then... As the time went on, it just Colorado just started to grow in us. Now we love it. She don't want to leave. She don't want right. to get. She don't want to get dressed nowhere else. But you know, it, that's what comes with football. It's the business. You got to move around a lot. And I like. I low key like moving around. I like seeing new states. I, yeah, I, I, you gonna get a chance. You gonna get. You gonna get def- <laughs> definitely get your fair share of visits before it. But go, coming into this year at Colorado, you know the expectations are sky high, especially you know with the injury last year, and then just having to go through that, the team kind of going through what they went through. What were your goals coming in? I was focused on myself this summer, uh, this May. I think the whole May we get off. I didn't go anywhere. I went straight to Texas. I trained every day, two times a day. I like that. And just treatment. I mean, I didn't go nowhere. I, I fished a couple of times in between those trainers. I had like an hour or two to fish. Instead of taking my nap, I just stayed up and just fished. You know, I was just dedicated. I did a lot of speed training, a lot of DB work. Mm-hmm. I was just out there just going crazy, trying to get faster. Now you can see me. I'm hawking people down. I right. open my legs up, open my scribe up some more. So I just appreciate the AP Wrench for letting me come and stay there. I mean, I stay there on a, on a, I'm like, <laughs> you could say what I, what I would say, like, a just a retreat, just me by myself and my fiance, her brother. We just out there working every day. She out there working now. He out there working now. We just out there working every single day. And then, like I said, I had that one year in my mind. It's like, dang, I got one more year to, to, to do the things that I want to do in college, and then I'm gone. So yeah. I was just focused on, like, the drive is scary to me because I tell you people, you never know where you're going to go. It, depend, it don't depend what anybody say. It's, it's up to the office. <laughs> Nobody right. can tell you where you're finna go unless you get that phone call. So it's kind of scary for me, but I'm also excited because I dreamed at this moment and I'm just ready to take, in, take it all in. Well, I mean, you 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 – you're getting a lot of well-deserved uh, claim and appreciation for for the things you're doing because it just hasn't been done at this level in so long, uh, probably since Dion did it and Champ did it, and even they didn't do it full time like you did it. They spot played that receiver and played corner. Nobody, nobody I, that I can remember played it full time, both like you're doing, man, and that's really incredible. The roller coaster of an NFL season is moving right along, and it promises to be a month full of tricks, treats, and of course touchdowns and DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NFL is the number one place to bet touchdowns running it in from the one or on an 80 yard bomb 
We don't care how they score touchdowns. We just want to bet on them. DraftKings heard us, and they are delivering. Ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple, like a player to score a touchdown. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app and make your pick. Here's a reason for new customers to do a touchdown dance of their own. Bet just $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code Richard. That's code Richard for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just five bucks. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. They're projecting that you go to number one pick. And is it any particular place other than the San Francisco 49ers? The Niner <laughs> fans would love to hear that you want to go play for the San Francisco 49ers. But I'm sorry to say, I, unless they trade the, the the farm, I don't think they're going to be close enough to be, yeah, <laughs> to be up there to get you. too many people. Yeah, they got to trade too many people. And they, they, done, they done paid a lot of players. So. <laughs> they paid a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, they, I don't think it's no, it's no specific place I want to go. I mean... I want to be the number one pick. That's what I dreamed of. I ain't dream over the place. I right. dreamed of being the number one pick. Talk about it. Talk <laughs> That's about what it. I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> number one pick. It don't matter where I'm at. I'm going to go have fun. It's football. It's football at the end of the day, and I'm there to do my job, and I'm ready to have fun. I mean, I fell in love with this game when I was four years old. My grandma put me in football, and I've been playing ever since. Out in Florida. Um, yes, was winning the Heisman on your list of, of, of goals? Nah, that's a, a lot of people ask me, did I dream of being in the Heisman race? Nah, I, if I'm being honest, I didn't dream about being that. That ain't come to mind. I'm like, I'm young. I'm thinking, I want to go to the NFL. I ain't thinking right. about nothing in college. <laughs> I want to go to the NFL. <laughs> Whatever it takes me to get in the NFL, that's what I want to do. But that, that, the Heisman race is kind of scary. But at the same time, if I don't win out of war, hey, I came here to play with my brothers every day to go one and zero. I didn't come here to play for the Heisman because without them guys, I wouldn't be in a race for the Heisman. So I just focus on going one and know each week, and if the Heisman come and come. Well, I mean, college experience is crazy, um, you know, because you, you there's so many different parts to it. You didn't play that at HBCU. You didn't play that Colorado. But this NI, it, like, you live in such a different time than I lived in when I was in college, and I just don't know how I would have dealt with it. <laughs> and so I want to ask you, because, I mean, you got NIL, where they paying kids. <laughs> you got all this social media where, where these fans take stuff way too serious. And they 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 ignorant. I mean, you talk about the the situation with you and the kid from Colorado State, the safety. You know, it just like well, yeah, what what are we doing here? Like it like you know, obviously the play was flagged and it wasn't a great play look on his behalf. Mm -hmm. But people say it's sending threats to kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't like I don't like that. I didn't like that. That's why exactly why I made that video and let people know. Like, hey man, I don't take it. It's football. If you don't get hurt playing football, you ain't playing hard enough. Right. <laughs> that's right. what I try to tell them like it's football at the end of the day man I've been playing this game since I was four years old I got hurt a couple of times and I understand it, it happens right. so there's no hard feelings towards anybody at the end of the day man we can play this game and we put our life on the line each day so just got to keep playing and the NIL space I mean I kind of just sit back and relax I mean I got a fiance so she helped me save a lot of money <laughs> so I, I'm not I'm not out there splurging my money which I'm happy on I probably just I do buy a lot of shoes. I probably got like 200 pairs of shoes since like been at Jackson State, but You'll shoes ain't that much. I wear right. them <laughs> and Adidas, so right. <laughs> shoes ain't that much. But yeah, you know, uh, I save a lot of my money because I know at the next level, man, <laughs> you already got everything you want. I got everything I want. I got two boats and I want to just play football. And I got a happy, I got a wife. So I'm just happy with my family right there. So I'm in it. I good. love it. I love it. You got a smart woman. She she got the right mindset. And I hope everything stays good with y'all because the, saving money and it, act like every day is going to be your last. You may not mm -hmm. ever make another dime and just keep stacking. Keep stacking. That's exactly what she tell me. Because when I first got money, I was old. I'm out there buying, trying to buy every little thing that I ain't have when I was little. Right. I'm out there trying to get everything. She's like, no, you need to save. She taught me credit. She taught me how to save money. She taught me why I need to pay my paycheck sometimes. Sometimes I just don't need to touch it. Sometimes yeah. I can't touch it. If yeah. I spend some one month, don't spend it the next month. Right. Save two months and spend one month. So it's a it's a lot that she has taught me. And I'm just so blessed that I met her in high school. And then she done taught me through college. It just made it so much smoother, so much easier. I come home to cook meals. I got nothing to complain about. House clean. All I do is take a shower. <laughs> hey, hey, sound like hey, you got you got a life men dream about. That sounds exactly like what you need. Yeah. yeah. But but that's that's really good because some dudes don't learn these lessons till they broke. 
mm-hmm. and that's speaking from experience in National Football League because because we we you know just same situation I was in. You grew up, we didn't have a lot. So when I get a lot now, I got all this stuff I always wanted to buy that my mama said I couldn't get, and they yeah. said I couldn't get or I couldn't afford. And I'm like, it sure do sound like a good deal to buy that car I always dreamed about. You know, yeah, that house exactly, I always dreamed about. Those that's chains exactly I, how I was thinking. That's exactly how I was thinking, but you know, she sat me down and told me like, nah. Sometimes you gotta say that money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it would come. But now I got a, I got a big name, so all I gotta do is really call them up and be like, I do some social media for you if you let me have a car. <laughs> <laughs> so she taught me how to market myself too. So it, it, it's kind of like it's right for me. Y'all doing right, man. You, you are, you are way advanced. And now we're gonna talk some football because I love talking football with you. I was enjoying it on your podcast. So which corner or receiver? Which one you like more? And you about to tell me both. Uh, like everybody asked me this question. I've been getting this question asked since I was in high school. Mm-hmm. And I try to tell them, like, I can't, like, I don't know, because I like catching pick six. I like pick the ball. I like catching pick six. And I also like scoring touchdowns. So I can't tell you, like, oh, I like this position more because whenever that ball touches my hand, I'm most excited. How about this? How about this? One-on-one mm-hmm. is Travis Hunter versus Travis Hunter. Yeah, corner see, versus I, that, Who win? I got that question too. But you know, I don't know because I know my flaws on defense side and I also know my flaws on receiver side. Right. So I don't know, but I don't I really don't know if I want to play receiver or DB. I mean, I have so much fun on both sides of the ball. Like somebody throw the ball to me, I'm throw the ball towards my way. I'm happy, like super excited. But those three targets a game, like I'd be like, God dang. So I'd be Bro. so excited to get on the opposite side of the ball and touch the ball. So I really be trying to tell him, like, bro, I love both, both because I got a chance to touch the ball on either side of the ball. And I got a chance to make a big play on either side of the ball. It's tough now. It's just coming from somebody who didn't have games where they didn't even look over there. And <laughs> when I tell you, you just got to find other ways to get involved. You be sitting there like that forced fumble you had for the game the mm-hmm. other day. Huge play. And people ain't giving you enough credit, enough appreciation for that because they sitting there like, oh, what 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 happens when he ain't making impact? He forcing fumbles for the game. <laughs> That's what I try to tell them. They don't want to put my tackles up there, but I put I deter I was determined this year to hey, I put some lay on and I told him, oh coach, I'm coming to tackle. If they come to my side, he getting on the ground. And that's why you see me running people down, making tackles. I'm open field making tackles. Hey, I took yeah. pride of making tackles. I'm coming down and hitting. I don't care how you get on the ground, you get on the ground. If I get ran down, you're gonna be on the ground. So it don't hey. matter. Nobody care about her getting ran over at this level. As long as they go down. As long as they go down. As long as they go down. Man, I'm just out there really just playing football because I love it. I like to fly around. I Like, I had one play on Baylor that we got a flag on for having 12 men on the field. But, like, you can see I study so much film. He hit behind and he, like, he off the ball, but he behind the tight end. And he going across and I'm already there. As soon as he catches the ball, turn around, I'm tackling him. But I watch so much film on that play, on those plays that they do like that. Like as soon as I'm half, I'm cheating the play. I'm halfway right. across the field by the time he even running, start running. I'm running right next to him. So as soon as he get the ball, to tackle him. Right. So that, that's one of my plays that I always look back at too. Because like if you study film and you like trust your instincts, it will all come to play and it'd be perfect play. Talk about your practice habits because that's that's one part of the equation because those when the light's not on. Those are the moments the light's not on, nobody looking, and, and they don't understand that. They think the food come out. They think you just show up and you like this, you know. And the film watching you put in, because I'm knowing you putting in crazy hours because you're dealing with Prime, and Prime putting in crazy hours. <laughs> yeah, he so, definitely is. So when you're watching this film and you you breaking this stuff down and then you got to go to practice it, and, and you practicing against the scout team and they showing you the same looks you've been just studying. And like, how do you, cause in those situations, we talked about what made our group so good. We were so locked in. Like, I don't give a dang if it's a walkthrough, a run through practice, full speed, or are we at the park? We not let nobody catch the ball. Oh yeah. That's exactly. How, you know, we got coach Mathis, Kevin Mathis. Uh, he don't play. Uh, we could be doing a walkthrough on, on a Friday. Somebody catch the ball, oh, you coming out. He don't like that. Hey, you're going to attack that ball, you're going to compete because if you're going to compete in practice, you're going to compete in the game. So we always compete. You know, he he put that in our mind. Like, it don't matter what we're doing. We can go against the ones. If somebody finna get hurt, it's going to be them because we are not letting them catch the ball. So <laughs> that's exactly what we do. We don't let nobody catch the ball on us. We we out there covering no matter what we're doing. We can have shoes on. We can be in flip-flops. We covering. 
So uh, he put that in our head. That we gotta have mentality, that dog mentality. He said that at every meeting. You gotta have that dog mentality. Don't let nobody catch the ball. It can be the walk on. You still better cover him. You better be blanket. You better not let him touch the ball. No, so he, he, put that, he put that mentality on us. And then if we do let him catch the ball, he gonna rewind it ten times in the film. He gonna keep <laughs> rewinding it. Like you really let him catch the ball? Uh huh. Look at it. You let him catch yeah. the ball. And he's just gonna keep talking. He's gonna keep talking then until a point where we be like, all right, coach, come on now. Next play, man. You're making us mad. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, the, just having coaches that done it, like I said earlier, it, it's just like it's just so good for us. It let us know like next level. And he treated like the next level. When Coach Ma- uh Kevin Mathis, Coach Mathis, he he treated like the next level. Like Coach Prime ain't gotta be in there. We going we in there like this, Coach Mathis. Like we we on our toes because we know he he finna get on us. He gonna let us know what we need to do, and it always helps us at the end of the day. So we can't even get mad at him. They, yeah, he's a great coach. That sounds like a great coach great to coach. me. <laughs> great coach. And look, we used to tell our coach, we used to tell Pete, like, hey, you don't want you don't want him to have to deal with this. Don't put him against us. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you want ones on ones. We about to show you why they talk about us like they do. <laughs> Y'all want to be in front of us. That's that's the risk you taking. Yep, that's exactly <laughs> how we play, man. We play just competition and everything we always compete you know i be in there competing with the corners and the nickels and you know we always in there talking best to each other like uh we like we have a thing going right now every time number 24 pressing he catch a pick i catch a pick so we both <laughs> got two interceptions in the, each game we both caught a pick so like oh, wow. i told him like i told him he told me he came up to me in the game and i caught my pick he like bro why can't you why you always gotta steal my shine <laughs> Why every time I catch a pick, you got to catch a pick. <laughs> but, you know, we had a little jokes like that. You know, we we uh, we had told him, like, if he, he, whoever catch the first pick in a, in a game, we'll do something special for him. And he he was the first. He caught the first pick. And then, I'm like, and then I came back and catch a pick. Like, God dang. God dang. God dang. <laughs> well, I had to be me. <laughs> yeah, man, we've been there just having fun. We love to be around each other. We love uh, playing amongst each other. And it's just a great bond that we have built within a short amount of time because, you know, there's all those are transfers and this is my second year here and that's a first year here. And we just try to help out each other the best way we could. Do you ever go to the receiver meetings? And, and yeah, 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 I go to the receiver meetings. You know, I split it up. And one day I just go straight defense. And the next day I go straight offense. And then, you know, we, we have our little walkthroughs. I do a walkthrough with defense and I go to offense walkthroughs and we split it up like that. And then I, you know, I have all the assistant coaches on the offside side of the ball and my receiver coach here come and talk to me, let me know plays, new plays and stuff I need to go over in the film I need to be watching, you know. But it, they kind of made it so easy for me. Like, I, I don't even have to go on that side of the ball and I know exactly what I got to do because right. they, they come in and they tell me, they know, hey, you tell me one time I got it down pack already. Right. So, Talk about that because you're a smart, super smart player, not not just a smart human being because you're a really smart human being. But in football terms, you talk about football IQ to be able to go into a huddle on offense, really be able to calm your body, calm yourself down, digest what the defense is giving you, what you know, what I mean, what you got to do, your splits, your alignments, your motions, et cetera, et cetera. And then be able to just flip the switch on defense and then re- understand the opposite really quick. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, we, it, it helps a lot on the offensive side of the ball because we have a quarterback that would tell us. Mm-hmm. He's he going to let us know what he's looking at. Like, we talk amongst each other during the game. So while we're playing the game, we have to sort it out at the same time. Like, I could do one play, like that post that Will caught. I told Coach, like, we need to run that We need to run that same play, just flip it on the opposite side and run a post and run a dig to bring the safety down so we can get the ball right over top of him. That's exactly what happened. Will made a great play. He made a great play. You know, we the coaches listen to us and let us know. We let them know what we see on the field, and they 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 go as accordingly. And then we, it's a great thing. We have coaches that listen to the players, you know. They, it actually comes out in the work most of the time, and they 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 trust us, and we trust them to put us in the best position. So it's actually okay. Good. Okay, OC Trav. <laughs> nah, it's, it's not really me being the OC. It's just like what I see on the field. Like if you give me a certain coverage, I know the weaknesses. I play corner, so I'm gonna know the weaknesses. And like right. on my touchdown pass, I told Shador like before that that like a little skinny post would be wide open. So I just ran behind him, got in this blind spot to make him like open up. And once he took that one step that I seen. Like, yeah, just bending in, just a little bit. The ball going to be right there. You know, Shador, he going to put the ball right exactly where it need to be. So all I did was I ran the basic route ever. And no release, no nothing. Just run up the field and look for the ball. <laughs> and it's right there. <laughs> it's right where it's supposed to be. It's right where it's supposed to be. All I had to do is catch the ball and make the move to get in the end zone. That game-winning touchdown you caught from Shador a couple weeks ago. 
he told you you should have caught the other one, the one yeah. where you got P.I. Yeah. And I'm like, boy, that boy should do it tough on him, ain't he? <laughs> yeah, but that, that's what we need. You know, I, I like when they challenge me because no nobody really challenged me because I'm always doing the right thing. But when I mess up and somebody challenged me, oh, my, oh, yeah. Go ahead and keep challenging me. It, it, it pumps me up to want to do better. I want to go out there and win. So like when the, like we would be practicing, you know, the receivers, we play against scout team the receivers, they'll be out there talking trash. But that helps us in practice because, you know, if we get that in the game, we know how to respond to it. So them out there going out there talking trash to us, that's one thing about our, uh, our scout team that nobody sees. Like they come out there talking hot and they out there running routes, they catching the ball, do whatever they got to do to beat us. So that just make us, like we like when the game time comes, it's just so easy for us. We have the fans and everything. That don't mean nothing to us because we know exactly what we're doing, what we got to do. Because we have the scout team players, we have the coaches that's teaching us what to do. We got a team, we got the teammates that we can trust. It's just so easy for us at that point. Do your boys ever be messing with you when you're at receiver and they be like, "Hey, you come on now, you oh, abandon yeah. us." <laughs> uh, nah, they always do that. But you know, we have uh, even our scripted conditioning staff. They we, be like they're split up. Someone be on offense and someone still defense because you know someone plays football in college, so someone was offensive player, someone was defensive players. You know how that go? They be out there talking trash to us and all, but that helps us. That make practice so much fun. We'd be excited to go to practice because we know we're just gonna have fun. Talk about your off the field. You know, obviously you you're a big time celebrity right now, and your name is everywhere, especially in Boulder. I bet you can't go to 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 your car after this. <laughs> nah, they, they, without... they don't see me. They don't see me. <laughs> hey, see can't me. go in public without no hoodie on. I bet you don't. <laughs> I I kind of do go to the grocery store sometimes, occasionally, but you know, it's rare. They don't, when they see me, I probably take like one or two pictures because they not they'd be shocked, like, oh, he's out here by himself just going to the grocery store. <laughs> like I'm not a normal person. But uh, like I said, I don't really do too much outside of football, man. I'm either here chilling with my girl, playing a video game, watching film, or fishing. And I haven't been fishing for a minute because I've been so locked in on football. The only thing I have outside of football right now is chilling with my girl and playing a video game. <laughs> what, what video game you on? Uh, I play a lot of 2K now and, you know, college football. You know, I I'm never going to give up on that. I'm playing that college football every day. Every chance I get. came back. <laughs> I'm on that thing every chance I get. You know, I mean, I'm playing ultimate team, but I also be playing with my friends and my homeboys. You know, we right. be out there and my little brother. See, I play weird games like Elden Ring and Destiny and yeah, stuff nah, like that. See, I, I, need to, I need to be able to talk trash. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be able to talk trash. I can't talk to trash to nobody on that. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. What's your build on 2K? What you running with? I got all five of them. <laughs> I got like, I probably say seven builds. I think I got seven builds right now. What I got you doing like with seven? Three builds? point guards. I got a power four. I got a center. Yeah. So I'm just out there, you know. When I got time off, man, I'm just going to sit here and play the game. And then I don't like to go outside unless we're going fishing. Are you playing park or are you playing rec? No, I play park and rec. You know, I play with my I play with my friends, so we'll go and park sometimes. I if I get on with my brother, we'll probably go and park, play play a little bit of rec when this whenever he decides he want to play rec with the guys. You green, green machine, Talk <laughs> green to machine, me. Talk to <laughs> green <me>. bean. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of hard to shoot on two K this year. That's what I heard. I'm still green machine though. <laughs> right. Well, so who you pattering your game after? And don't say Dion. That's cliche. Uh, what you mean? You talking about uh, after, uh, after football? Uh, Corner, nah, I, don't really, I don't I don't put my game out to nobody. I just mix a lot of players that I like mm-hmm. together and I like to watch. Like I just just like every player that I can that's good, I try to see what I can do to be just like that I can steal a piece of their game and put it into my game. Like if you got like Jamar Chase, he out there catching the ball on people's head, head talking like I put that in my game, go attack the ball whenever I get the chance. You know, Pastor 10, I they're locking up, have his footwork, his technique, technician. Wait. So that's I take points of everybody game and try to put it in my game. You know, Larry Fitzgerald had the hands, you know, I but I got one drop, I think, this whole season. So I put that in perspective. I put that in my game. I just like your zone coverage is out of this world, you know, you out there stealing everything. So that's exactly what I do. I put that in my game. Like everything I see the person does. I try to steal that and put it in my game. I don't like to watch one person because right. I, can, I can learn one thing, but I can learn also more things if I keep watching other people. So that's exactly what I do. I just watch a lot of people and put it into my game and see what I can do better. Why do you wear 12? But I probably, I, I wear 12 because it was the only number left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the only, uh, because I wanted to wear number three in high school, but, you know, because I grew up wearing number three and number four. 
because my dad, well, he was number four, but I started winning number three when I was little. But when I got to high school, I moved to Georgia. Nobody knew who I was. I played basketball my eighth grade year, so I didn't get to play football that year. And then when I moved to freshman year in high school, I wore number 40 because that was the only number left. I was always never there to pick my number. I don't know how. <laughs> I was never there to pick my number. I had number 40 on playing <laughs> corner, <Ugh. laughs> catching puppet turns. Um, and then number 12, like, one day, you know, we I would think I was a sophomore, but, you know, you got juniors and seniors ahead of you. They get to pick their number first. So, you know, how coach do that. He let them do that. And that was the year I took off. So I know he regretted that. <laughs> Not to get my number three and number four. But once I had number 12, that was probably one of my best years. So I was like, yeah, no, nah, definitely not changing my number. Now I'm going to keep number 12. I thought my own number. I don't need to copy nobody. <laughs> right, right. So you go league, you go on 12, because they changed the rules in the league now. You mm -hmm. can go, you can wear teenage numbers at corner receiver you can wear whatever you want yeah Wh i'm trying to get them a 12 best as i can but the number don't make me <laughs> no i'm out there playing like i said i had number 40 on playing on varsity so the number they ain't make me i'm gonna let you know something don't go into the league wearing 40. i don't care <laughs> i'll tell it to you <laughs> wait i might go back to that now <laughs> no. hey hey I humble, it might humble me you never know it might humble me even more <laughs> sure. hey, i remember 40 was it was ugly but it might be fresh you never know now you know, you Humphrey, number 44. He, he didn't want to be. He, he didn't go back. <laughs> Hump didn't go back. <laughs> he lost it when Earl went there because because Hump was wearing 29. Then he went there and he went to 44 and it was. But it was I'm different. saying like, he stand with it, though. You see, he, he is stand, stand with it. Though, so like, with it. The, the number don't make you. You make the number at the end of the day. You just got to keep going out there and working. So if I got to if I get the number 12, I'm going to get the number 12. I can't get number 12. I know nobody want to, want to wear number 40. Right. No, it's only a pl couple places I think you wouldn't get <laughs> get away with 12. Yeah, Seattle, because mm -hmm. they got that the 12-man fan. Yep. New England, you probably yep. ain't getting it there. But That's everywhere England. else, I, I mean, you might not get it in Houston either. That Nico was doing pretty Nico, good with yeah, 12. Nico, he's crazy. He's going crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so but but for the most part, I think you're gonna have a, a good shot at it. Well, if you got any questions for me, I know this is your resting time, and I appreciate you. Nah, you you know we could talk off phone whenever we need to. You know how that go. But I like I said on my show, I definitely need you to come out here and help me, or, or a couple techniques because you know I'm always ready to learn. I, I learn before anything before I even talk back. So I just want to I want you to come out here and give me some tips what I can do I better. You. I want to learn better. I want to I want to know how you make it through the league though. Like, yeah. what was your main focus when you, once you got there? When I got here, it was just trying to stay ahead of the curve. Um, we came in, it was a lockout year. So we didn't even, like, we, when we got drafted, that was the only time they could call us. Then they couldn't talk to us at all. We couldn't go to OTAs, no mini camp, no nothing. It was straight lockout. Okay. So the next time they saw me was training camp. So I went straight into training camp as a rookie. No, no nothing, no preparation. <laughs> I was like, they about to cut us off. <laughs> we, we, but i was so i was so pissed off and i told myself i was like you know because in college there was too, too many times where i was overthinking in games and just like not playing fast and like second guessing myself even though that i studied the tape i know what they're doing but i'm like mm, what if it's something else you know what if it's something else then i got to the senior bowl and they invited me late because somebody didn't show up or somebody got hurt and I went in there and I was like, hey, I'm going to promise myself you're going to play fast and trust yourself. You're going to trust yourself. If, you, if you're getting sent home and you get sent home, you're going to get sent home being your best and letting it fly, letting, your, letting yourself be the best version of yourself. So when I got to the league, it was the same way. I was like, hey, I'm going to study my butt off and I'm going to trust my instincts. I'm going to study, study, study. But I'm, when I get out there, I'm not going to second guess nothing. I'm believing what I see. I'm believing my, in myself and believing what, what I study. And it worked and it worked. And thankfully I got guys around me that, that did the same thing and we all grew together. So it's like, we sitting there communicating things. And then after a while we communicating without even saying that. We like, look at like, you see it? <laughs> yeah. hey, it's about to be one of them. Get ready. <laughs> this is um, what we be doing too. We do the same thing. Like we'll talk, get hand signals, but before the play, before we get out the huddle, we'd be like, you just get that little nod. There's something about that little nod that nobody sees that you know we on the same page. We on the same page. You look at your safety, you're like, hey, yeah, yeah, we on. Some of this. But I, I can't wait to get out there to, to help you. You don't need my help, by the way. You you already got incredible I, tech. I, I can take as much help as I can get. See, you never know. You can learn something different every day. There's right. all that I can learn. So I'm just always open to learning something new. You know, I'm I'm very humble. And I pride myself on being humble, but I also want to learn more. 
Yeah, uh, I'm I, happy to I'm happy to help you because a lot of it is just situational. It's sudden su- a lot of subtle things that I'd like to talk to you about within the route. You know what I mean? You you do a great job with everything you're doing, but in the league they got so much little nonsense that these veterans. You love Larry Fitzgerald, but I guarantee you, if you had to govern him, you'd be sitting there like you ain't gonna like him as much. <laughs> he <laughs> do you. so much nonsense to be like, hey, bro, hey, you gonna really grab the back of my helmet like that and, and push <laughs> off like, hey, come on, hey, yeah. ref, you ain't gonna say nothing to him. <laughs> Yeah. But I'd love to sit there and work with you and talk you through that. You do you soft shoe because it looked like you do both at times. You soft shoe or you step? I kind of do both. I mix it up. You know, right. I try to mix everything up. And like I said, I'd be watching Patrick Chatterton. He try, he mixes up. He's just such a technician. And then you got you got Ward. He do the same thing. They always mix it up. It's like you got a tall guy doing the same thing as a small guy. So it's just like that's why I watch so many people. I try to get so many different ideas and try to switch it up as much as I can. So like I never try to shoot the same thing twice. I always try to fake it out. Like I'm about to about to jam you, and then I won't touch you until later in your route. So. Mm-hmm. I, it's CB, a lot of things that I do different. I'm a lot. I'm a lot of the same thing over and over. <laughs> <It's what> I, <laughs> that was my best and worst trait because I'm stepping every single time. But and if people are like, "Why you don't follow?" Because my team and everybody in this stadium knows if you throw the ball over here to the left, I'm probably booking it. Yeah. So you might want to <laughs> stay away from here. I don't need to follow nobody. If my, if you if you take your number one guy over there, then Earl Thomas, you're gonna have to. He gonna lean over there and help his buddy, and I'm gonna be. <laughs> Booking whoever's in front yeah, of me. My, but but my, my coach, we trust both our corners. So, like, I think last year, UCF, yeah. I think they wanted me to follow, but we trust our corner so much. It's like, yeah, I don't need to follow. You just play the right side, he played the left side. You stayed our side line, he stayed the A side line. That's exactly what we did. And we covered him. We, well, I think he had probably like 40 yards, I think, total out of the whole game. So we did our job because he is, like, I think, it was a, 95 percent deep ball guy <laughs> so we did our job so we, we did what we were supposed to do so like as this the coach has been able to trust us like i said earlier it give us a, a boost it give us a boost to ourselves y'all doing a great job man i'm I'm excited to watch y'all this week because y'all had the off time and, and rested <laughs> up you feeling healthy you feeling good uh, yeah, I'm about to go home and get some treatment right after this. You know, I, just sure. got some, I got some before this. I'm going back to get some more. <laughs> keep keep that. Like you talked mm-hmm. about how I lasted so long in the league. It's that. It's it's taking care of your body first and foremost. I'm pro- you probably already got a game where you're so far ahead of where a lot of guys are when they get to the life. I know. <laughs> what, you said, I know. what you said about NIL? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got everything you can mention. I'm about to get a chamber in I, probably like the next two days. I was about to say, you you, you can have chamber. mine. I ain't using it no more. I'm about to put a chamber in my house, and I'm about to just get in there and just sleep six hours a day. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. You know, the treatment is very key. That's one That's one extra thing that I did this year, too. I took that more seriously than last year. But after that injury, I took that more seriously, and I trained way more than I did last year. So that's one of the things that I I, I prided myself on this year, too. That's what Shoulders. Um, Not, not big shoulder, like weight, but mm-hmm. like the little shoulder oh, yeah, muscles. Yeah, yeah, we do all that. Never, never not do that, mm-hmm. especially if you're tackling human beings. Yeah, like we, we, we slim thugs, we ain't big boss. <laughs> so keep, keep those shoulders strong, yes, sir. We definitely uh, do that too. Thank diet, you. it won't be an issue right as you're young, but it'll get an issue as you get older. Oh, uh, yeah, like I said, my girl, she works out, so you know, I'm out here eating veggie noodles and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this girl is a saint. She needs to yeah. write a book. Yeah, she get me right. I'll be, I tell you, I come home to a cook meal. I ain't got to know. She never tell me what she cooking. I just come home and it's there. You see? And I'm good. <laughs> and Travis, you got it. You got it right right now, babe. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. I love you to no death. And we're going to, after we get off air, we're going to exchange numbers and, and I'll be out there. I got to make it out there before the season. I got to tell my wife and figure out what day <laughs> I'm going to make it before it get too cold and bold. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got to make it soon because you know it's about to be November. <laughs> it's flying. Yes, sir. It's flying. There it is. It's great talking to you, brother. And maybe I'll talk to you later before you win this Heisman and they give you this ceremony if you oh. want to come back on and I'll oh, come no, back I'm on your show. That. I, I definitely got to come back on. This is probably what, the second show I've been on, so I got to stay true to people that stay true to me. So definitely respect. be back on. Respect and love, brother. Yes, sir. Respect. Love. Well.